the biggest limitations in traditional businesses. Guys, Kim here from Your Social Voice. Just wanted to show you a video today around some of the limitations that traditional businesses face when it comes to marketing their business and growing, especially online, because one of the big things that I see with traditional businesses is that like this coffee shop, like many places, they rely on people coming by. So if you don't walk down the street, drive down the street, if your friends don't tell you about it, how would you know that a place like this exists? Now, albeit these guys do do good marketing, so you will see them and hear about them all over the place. But if they didn't, how would you know they're there? So a lot of traditional businesses will rely on people walking by on word of mouth. And look, all of that is good. I'm not saying in any way, shape or form that any of that is bad. However, how can you scale that? You can't make more people walk down the street. You can't make more people drive by. Unfortunately, you can't make more people talk about you. Right? It's very hard to do, it's not what we call scalable, which means that you can't literally flick a switch, turn a button on, make something happen to increase that dramatically. However, with online, you can. So one of the big limitations is how do you scale these forms of traffic when it comes to a traditional business? How do you scale what happens? How do you scale about how people talk about you? A few limitations when it does come to your ads because you've got to look at with a traditional business, how far are people willing to travel? Now, for me, I would say anywhere from probably three to five um, kilometers, if you have a, like, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for here, a, a general business that there are many of, right? If a consumable-based business, if there's consumables, like a coffee shop, maybe it's a gym or anything like that, three to five kilometers is probably the distance until someone else finds another variant, another location that could be utilized as well. So what you need to think about is how do I best, how do I most effectively capture the audience around there because so, one of the limitations is you do have to market just to that location you have to market just to that spot and that's all you can really do so what I normally recommend is a huge piece of awareness huge piece of engagement when it comes to your advertising or marketing then so if I was marketing for this coffee shop what I would do is I would locate it using Facebook and Instagram advertising I would drop a pin location on this and put in this exact street address then from there, I would market content, I would market information and awareness pieces around this business, specifically to that area. Because what I wanna do and ensure is that everyone within that three to five kilometer radius knows who we are, where we are and what we do. And if we're a coffee shop, they know what type of coffee that we have, what type of cakes we have, what type of lunch, do we do lunch? Do we do takeaways? Do we have um, drinks of the evening where people can BYO? All the things that you need to be able to find out and identify about a business to make you want to go there. And that's what's really important. That's what's really good for us to understand is how to overcome these limitations because there are many that can happen for traditional businesses but we need to work out how to overcome them because we are geographically locked as a traditional business unless for some reason people are traveling 10, 20, 50, 100 kilometers flying from over east to come and visit you. If they're not, then you really need to be hyper specific when it comes to your marketing, when it comes to your advertising, and that limits the reach because you can't run conversion campaigns, you're limited to run traffic campaigns. The main type of campaign that you can run as an ad is what we call a page post engagement or a brand awareness ad. They're the two options that we have to be able to really overcome these limitations. And do they still work as effectively? Short answer, yes they do, but you do need to set them up properly. Now, how do you set them up properly? Well, you do I have to identify your niche, your offer, and your copy. We've got many videos on that that you can check out on our channel. Now, what do we do, right? Once, if we do have that identified, like, what do we do about promoting it? Well, something that I think is hyper effective for a traditional business that allows you to overcome it is to do uh, competitions and giveaways using Messenger. Because Messenger, these guys agree with me, right? Messenger is super, super, super powerful. Now, what would you do? How would you get people into Messenger? Utilizing something like, and we'll put a link in the description about our uh, Messenger competition giveaways and bots. Because if you can have something that is hyper specific to our audience, that is local, that is location based, where they really start to build that interactivity and they want to come along, Again, because if there's a competition giving away a week's worth of coffee, I'm not gonna enter if it's 25 minutes away from me. Even though I might get free coffee, I'm not gonna travel all the way there to take advantage of it. 
right? So you need to think about something. If you're gonna do a competition and bring people into Messenger that way so you can build a subscriber list, as I said, there's more about that in the uh, competition giveaway formula that we have that you'll be able to have a link to in the description. What can you do to make it so that it's only gonna be for those specific people? And then guess what? We only promote it to the area that you're in, right? And when you do that and take advantage of that, it allows you to overcome a lot of the hurdles that traditional businesses have. Now, the other and final limitation that I find with some traditional businesses is that their products or services aren't suitable for social media, in which case, right, and, and just that's, that's the way that it is, like a plumber, for example, thinking about social media for a plumber, it's probably not gonna work. And that's when you need to lead with value. You need to leave, lead with a value proposition being giving people strategies, tips, tools, tactics that they can use about your business external to just saying, hey, do you need a plumber? Because no one is scrolling through social media thinking about, hey, how do I get um, a plumber to come and visit me now? No, you, you have Google, my pipes have burst, where's the local plumber? Local plumber in West Perth, local plumber in East Perth, right? That's straight away what people will go for. So you need to lead with value. And look, does it take time and energy and effort to do? Yes, but does it pay off in the long run? 100%. So I highly recommend using that strategy to overcome that small hurdle for a traditional business. Now guys, if you've liked what you've heard today, please give me a little thumbs up down below so I know that you have enjoyed it. Make sure you drop a comment um, into the box below. Let us know what you thought, if there's anything else you want us to cover for you. And as always, subscribe so you get these videos before anyone else. Until next time, I'm Kim Barrett. You've been awesome. Adios.